Hello reformers and welcome back to A Clash of Kings. Now when we left off we had just sold a little bit of salt at King's Landing and we had done a task, a rather shady task for Tyrion himself, Mr. Tyrion as we like to call him, and he has given us a bit of a, con a, bit of a contact, I, I suppose you could say, in the castle and he has told us that there is a tournament and this tournament will give us 10,000 coins if we are able to succeed. So let us visit the melee grounds. The grounds of the Red Keep have been fitted to accommodate a small melee. Alright. So let's go in and see what we can do. Are we actually fighting yet? No, we're not fight. Are we? No, we're not, we're not. We're not fighting just yet. Hello, steward. Yes, when, when does the melee start? Ah, soon, I imagine. Hard to say, really. The king does as he pleases, and the rest of us obey. Oh, I see. So he goes where he pleases. Is he Mundo? I don't know. If he wants to attend the melee, he will, and as soon as he attends, we start. So there's really no saying when. Well, I've been told that it will be today, but then again, I was told the same thing yesterday. But everything's ready, just as it was yesterday. The kitchen wenches got a belly full of good food yesterday when we had to throw it all out. I'll just wait here, then. As you please, the heralds will blow the trumpets when the king arrives. Very well. Ah, oh, he should have said, I see. That's Elias's thing, isn't it? That's his catchphrase, he just says, I see. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. That was all part of the task, yes. I was just thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to have to wait there for some time, am I? Uh, anyway, at last the king arrives. Joffrey and his younger siblings, Marcella and Tommen, take a seat accompanied by the queen regent, Cersei Lannister. The court amongst them, the lords of the small council, take their seats. Despite the exalted company, the participants are a paltry lot, though a few fine knights are amongst them, including the knights of the king's guard. You decide to forfeit your spot in the melee. No, let's not do that. Ready your gear. Your first opponent is Moros Slint, the son of the former commander of the Gold Cloaks, a fat youth newly given the position of squire. He holds his sword as if it's the first time he's been given a weapon. Joffrey nods, and a herald blows a trumpet, a signal to fight, and you tighten the grip on your weapon. Not the grip, not the grip, but the grip, yes. <laughs> ah, amusing. Okay, so let's let's see what we can do here. This guy actually has some really, really good armor, so I'm actually... Oh, oh there we go. We, we could do a little bit of damage to him. I'm actually really pleased I have good shield skill at the moment, to be honest, because that is the only thing that is saving me right now, in my opinion. Otherwise, the shield... Uh, shield's gonna be destroyed very, very quickly. There we go. That was rather easy. With Moros Slint defeated, you retire to refresh yourself. Soon, however, the heralds call your name and you get ready for another fight. This time, your opponent is Sir Balon Swan, fresh from his fight against Sir Hobber Redwin, a large man with a broad chest and arms thick with muscle. He's carrying a large mace. He nods towards you, smiling. And you undress in front of him immediately. No, apparently we charge in. We don't undress. Anyway, let's go. Alright, so what am I going to do against this guy? So I, I, I'd i like to use my crossbow, maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, we did some damage. We did some damage. That is what we like to see. Now, if I could just... Oh, there we go. We actually got him. Well, that's hilarious. Thankfully, he didn't have a shield. He didn't have a shield, so that obviously makes a huge difference. The crowd cheers your name as Sir Balon is lifted off the ground. His nose bloodied, but otherwise unfazed. Your throat is parched, but soon the heralds call your name again. This time it's not your name the crowd cheers, but that of Sir Horace Redwin, the handsome son of Lord Paxter Redwin. With a bright smile, he throws a crown of flowers to the closest maiden, and then immediately charges you. Alright. Well, does he have a shield? Yeah, he does have a shield. Well, this is going to be annoying. Okay, may maybe not, maybe not. If I'm able to deal damage to him, I don't really mind, because obviously... It really just depends on how good their armor is, for the most part. Oh yeah, there we go, nice. That was a nice slash right there. Maybe I can use my my rate, oh, my, my reach, my range. Ugh, that's, that's, that's pretty awful. There we go. There we go, that's nice. Just a little bit more, Elias. Just a little bit more. Don't get hit now, you fool. There we go, that's what we like to see. Alright, so where do we go from here? 
So Horace gets to his feet a bit unsteady but appears to have suffered no more injuries than those to his dignity. Throwing you a withering glance, he saunters off the field. While stretching your legs, you watch the next fight between Sandor Clegane, the hound, and a knight wearing silver griffins on a blue blue field. Blue blue field, really? Is it is it really blue field, not blue shield? Oh, okay, well, whatever. The hound makes quick work of his opponent, and soon the heralds call your name again. This time, your opponent is a free rider in the service of Lord Baelish by the name of Lothor Brune. He tightens the grip again. <laughs> the grip on his sword, and... Okay, so, ah, okay, so we actually have our health be taken forward in every single fight. Well, that's interesting. That guy was very easy to kill. I'm not entirely sure why. With Lothor Brune unconscious, you retire to the serving table. As you chug a large jug of ale, you notice the remaining competitors doing the same. All that remains is Sir Merin Trant, Sir Mandon Moore, and Sandor Clegane. When you enter the field, you see Sir Merin Trant opposite you, a bored-looking man wearing the armor of the King's Guard. He gribs his sword comfortably. He gribs it, does he? Yes. Right, so this is this is going to be interesting because this guy has King's Guard armor, and we know how good that actually is because we've we've acquired that in a previous series. So let's try and just hit his head. That seems to be the best course of action. I'd like to take no damage if at all possible. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. No damage taken and level fifteen as a result. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. Alright, so next one. So Merin quickly regains his feet and leaves the grounds. The next fight is Sandor Clegane and Mandon Moore. A hard fought and brutal fight, if I can speak. In the end, the hound prevails. Soon, the heralds blow the trumpets, and the last fight of the day begins. The hound is sweating but still fresh, and looks confident. You grib, grib with a B, your own weapon. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry, I just find that amusing. Anyway, let's charge in, shall we? Alright, so he ha oh, he has a two-handed. <laughs> okay, he has a two-handed. Switch to crossbow, shoot him in the face. Ah, yes. That's very honorable, isn't it? Ah, yes, very. Okay, so the hound quickly regains his feet, even though he has a crossbow bolt in his head, uh -huh, and with a shrug, goes for the serving table. Uh, can you just imagine that? Imagine that imagery. A fellow just getting up with a crossbow bolt right through his skull, going over to the serving table and being like, oh yes, I'm going to have some wine. Yes. You find yourself standing in front of the king and his mother, both of whom congratulate you on your victory. The queen looks like she'd rather be anywhere else. The king and his court soon retires, and you, you decide to follow them. Presented with the champion's purse, you soon find yourself surrounded by courtiers. However, the feast is at hand, and you excuse yourself while you call for a servant to help you out of your armor and into something more suitable. At the feast, you decide to either get drunk or restrain yourself. I think, I think we should restrain ourselves. Ah, there we go. During the feast, you restrained yourself and had long talks with Sir Bowden Swan. Both of, Oh, Bowden. Balon. Thank you very much. Balon Swan. Both of you enjoy the evening. As you leave the castle, you're cheered by the peasants gathered outside. Feeling refreshed, you return their waves and their smiles before you hurry along the path leading out of the castle. And there you go. We've gained... Relation with... Tywin, or Ty Luz, as we like to call him in a previous series, and Nine Renown, as well as a little bit of relation with the Westerlands itself. That's very nice. Alright, so where is Tywin, by the way? I actually don't know where he is. I'd very much like to speak to him, because I would like to become a vassal, if at all possible. Alright, so what is Brynden doing right now? Well, he's obviously our surgeon, so I'm going to continue increasing our intelligence here and I think it would probably be a good idea to improve his trainer skill as well but I think at the moment I, I, I guess I guess that will be fine actually just 
Just hang on a second. What I'd like to do is just check something real quick. Right, okay, so this crossbow does not require any strength requirements, so that's absolutely fantastic. So we can just spec him into whatever we like. I'm going to go for trainer skill, I guess, and we're going to spec him into a little bit of crossbows because I'd like to get him a crossbow at some point. And Gurnia, Gurnia doesn't even have a shield. He doesn't even have a shield. I don't know why. I probably need to give him a shield. That would probably make sense. Do I have a shield? No, I don't have a shield. Okay, so I do need 10 intelligence to be able to actually use these books. So it would be quite nice for me to do that. But obviously, at the moment, I don't know whether it's worth it. Ah, I could give him a great sword. Ah, yes, there we go. That That's actually pretty good. That's worked out quite nicely because obviously he doesn't have a shield. So using a two-handed weapon is probably going to be the best thing for us to do for him. And technically, I could give him this chainmail hawbok. Should I do that? Why not? Let's give him that. He has 16 strength. He may as well make good use of it, because I won't be able to use it for another couple of levels. So that is indeed great. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's go over to Alan and just speak to the rest of our companions here. And we're just going to continue specking them into various things. There we go. Some more strength for him. There we are. Very nice. And, ooh, Carver. Very nice. Okay, good, good. Continue specking into strength, Carver. Don't eat my face. Thank you. There we go. And, ah, okay, fantastic. Okay, so everyone has leveled up with the exception of Elias. And he is going to be... Well, here's the thing. What I'd love to do is I would love to get intelligence to 10 so that I'd, I could maybe read those books. But as it stands, at the moment, it's probably a better idea to go for strength so that we can start using heavier and heavier armor so that we can maybe stay alive a little bit longer, but do bear in mind that I don't want to wear too heavy armor, because that is going to make us a lot slower on the battlefield, and as a duelist, obviously, we do not want to move too slowly, do we? No, not at all. So, shall I... Uh, I think I'm going to spec into Power Strike here, just to get that nice sort of overall number, and I think I'm going to leave strength where it is, maybe for now, maybe I'm going to go for 16 and then leave it, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Alright, so what are we going to do now? Well, I, what I'd like to do, actually, is try and find Tywin. Where is he? Let's actually just see where he is. Let's speak to this fellow. Hello there. I want to know the location of Tywin. Oh, he's being held captive. He's a prisoner. Oh, well, we know him to be taken prisoner quite often, actually, because... The Reaper of Crow's Nest, as he was known, you know, Elias. Elias was known as the Reaper of Crow's Nest a while ago. And, uh, yes, we took Tywin prisoner a number of times, so <laughs> that was, yeah, that's pretty amusing that he's been taken prisoner yet again. I'm still trying to find that ransom broker. Ah, there we go. Hello. Want to sell all the prisoners. 840. 840 coins. That's not exactly what I would like, but obviously I don't have too much prisoner management. I basically have enough prisoner management to be able to take Lord's prisoner whenever we so desire. All right. So I think the best thing for us to do right now is not obviously to go over there, because that's currently being raided, but what I would like to do is maybe start leveling a couple of Westerlands units, because eventually we're going to obviously, you know, use their units solely, you know, it would be quite nice to use them only. So let's see if we could try and get a couple more of these. So far, it doesn't seem to be going too well. We have seven of them so far. And I'm going to need to swap them out at some point. Are these guys actually against the Westerlands as well? I, I don't know. It doesn't look like it. They don't seem to be doing anything against us. Or, well, against the Westerlands, because technically we're not part of the Westerlands just yet, but still. Wow, every single vassal we come across that is part of the Westerlands is very weak at the moment. I'm a bit... <laughs> I'm a bit dubious, really, about joining a faction that is extremely... Uh, extremely weak in terms of their vassals. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so going into the woods alone, you suddenly feel a blade across your throat. An outlaw has ambushed you. Listening to him slobber and stammer, it is clear that the man is unstable and dangerous. You decide to seize the blade, kick the man in the shins, or thrust your elbow into his groin. Anything to touch a groin, eh, Elias? Yes, let's do that. 
There we go, you managed to get away. That is, yes, that is the thing I've learned over many, many moons playing Clash of Kings, where you are going to need to elbow the man in the groin. Yes, I've done every other option and it has always resulted in me losing stats, which is always absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Uh, um, would you, hey, um, Mr. Craig Hall, would you mind? Thank you for, oh. <laughs> uh, okay, sure, why not? You can just, sure, join me. I, I don't really mind at this point because I'm actually just trying to get a, a little bit of experience for our newly gained recruits, but it would have been nice for us to actually take this party on ourselves, but, ah, uh, well, never mind. It seems like the Westerlands are wanting to help me out a little bit, or maybe they just want to take the loot from themselves. Yes, that's probably the case. Now, is it just me, or has the looting system changed in this version? Because in previous versions, you were able to give your companions, or in general, when you were finished with a particular fight, you could give an option for your companions to take the loot. So, theoretically, you would have a bunch of people that could take loot and then sell it at a nearby town, and you wouldn't need to clog up your own inventory to be able to do that. Is that still the case? Let's actually just see whether that is indeed the case, because I think it has changed. And that's kind of sad to me, because I absolutely loved that system beforehand, because it would just enable you to stockpile so much money and it just makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because you're not the only person that has an inventory in the in the party, right? I mean, you have a bunch of companions that have, you know, loot and they can take things as well. But let's actually just see whether that happens. I'm going to capture one of these guys, I guess. Oh, okay. So we didn't actually get any loot for that whatsoever. Well, that's amusing. All right. So they're fighting those guys over there. All right. So Old Town is all the way down here. So Tywin is going to have to escape by himself by the looks of things. Shall we go into the Pendrick Hills? Shall we go into the Pendrick Hills? Let, let, let's go into the Pendrick Hills and we can explore there a little bit. Wow, these guys haven't even leveled up yet. Well, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to explore the Pendrick Hills in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.